Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to be looking at the paint tab inside of the brush creator. So we've gone over stroke, shape and grain, and now we're on paint. And let's look at the mixing modes. The first one we have here, paint and mix curve editor. Here, if I push on the screen, you can see this line is moving through the paint and mix curve editor. This is demonstrating the pressure. Now we have two options here, paint and mix. When you highlight one, it makes that property, that curve, more opaque. Notice that the mix one has fallen into the background and the paint one has taken precedence. Now on the left, we have the word paint. Low and high would be the amount of paint. And on the bottom, we have low and high, and this is symbolizing pressure. Again, we can see that by pushing on the screen. At the top, we have paint pressure threshold. This is set to zero. If we set it up to 20%, by default, it's set to 10. What will happen is we will paint here. And as we reduce the pressure by 20%, we'll switch to mixing, which happens right here on this curve. To demonstrate these properties, what we're gonna do is we're going to reduce these to a single node. We're going to remove all the nodes and drag it down on mix and just use paint. This is doing a high amount of painting, a lower amount of paint, and much less. This is similar to the loading property over here in the properties panel. Now, if we drag this from low to high, then pressure will be used to determine the amount of paint. Notice over here, we've gone to a small, a low amount of paint. In order to switch from painting to mixing, let's go to mix. Let's reduce paint down to nothing and mix. Let's bring this up. Let's look here at a single swipe up with low mixing, a single swipe up with a medium amount of mixing, and a single swipe up with a high amount of mixing. Notice the amount of paint that is moved as well as how far it's moved. Now, if we do this with two colors, Now we can't paint here because nothing is set in paint. We need to bring this up some in order to paint. Let's select another color. Now I've added some blue here and what we're going to look at is this low, this low mixing, medium mixing. Notice it's mixing this color uh, for a little longer, pulling the paint a little further. Notice here with high mixing, we have this, it's taking this original color and just pulling it through. It's starting to blend that red in a little bit later. Now, in order to get to this mix mode, let's put paint levels up a little bit, bring this to a single uh, node. Paint pressure threshold, if we bring this up to 10%, which is the default, and a lot of these, this will paint first. And then as I decrease the pressure 10%, it's going to switch to blending. Notice you can see that pressure here. This is split already into 10 sections, 10, a 10 by 10 grid. So you can see when it goes from 10% lower, it'll switch to mixing. Now, if we bring this all the way up to 50%, then if I start painting here, in order to switch to blending, I've got to drop uh, 50% of pressure. This will make it quite a bit more difficult to accidentally mix. If this is set to 100, it will continue to paint the whole time. Keeping this between 10 and 30% will allow you to relatively easily switch to mixing and painting. Let's reset this using the X in the corner. In paint and blend, notice that painting happens second. 
blending happens first. So you see that blending starts with low pressure here. If I put the stylus on the screen and we go down to our two colors here, notice that we're blending. If I push a little harder, when I get to this pressure level right here, just a little before medium pressure level, I start to paint. If I drag the stylus again until I get to that level, I'm really just blending. A steep curve like this means that when we start painting, it's going to go very quickly to full opacity. If we adjust this curve here, when we start to paint, we're going to do a lot more gradual rise up to fuller opacity. Notice because we have this set to medium, this never gets to full opacity. And here, because we're using uh, oils and acrylics, it's not going to get to its full impasto depth. So here we can see that hitting that thick, oily paint. Let's reset that and look at our last option here, the Blend Curve Editor. Now the Blend Curve Editor, uh, these are, by the way, for the paint modes. This is uh, Keyboard Shortcut 2, Paint and Mix, Keyboard Shortcut 3, Paint and Blend, and Keyboard Shortcut 4, Blend. As you select these, it switches the paintbrush for you. Notice we've got the dashed line around the brush cursor. Here, the solid line and the solid line. All right, so here, this curve right here means that we're going to start with gentle blending. That means these two colors will start blending together. Here, as we get higher, up here, what's going to happen is we're going to pull the paint through. And again, let's reduce this down to a single node so we can see what this does. Here with this set high, it's going to pull the starting color, this blue paint, straight through the red and just do a very little bit of uh, red into it because we're not all the way up. Here for all the way up, it's going to start with this original color and keep it moving. This is a good way to move a single color through your canvas. We put this to medium. Notice that it pulls the paint, but it starts blending the red paint, the secondary color, very early. And here with low blending, we immediately start getting that blending into the second color, that red color, just a little bit of pull with the blue paint, our first color. All right, let's reset that. Now all of these, these different blending, mixing, curve editors, these can all be adjusted for the entire program uh, by using the curve editor here. This curve editor, this is what these will reset into. Notice paint and mix for oils and acrylics. We look over here, notice that the curve here is the one that we reset. If we change this, we click OK, click OK here. Notice that this is updated. Now I can't reset this because this is the reset state. If I go back here, I can reset this to the starting default state, not the adjusted one. So you don't have to worry about accidentally screwing that up and not being able to get it back to where it was. Notice that there are three categories here, oils and acrylics, express oils, and other tools. Other tools includes all the other tools. Make sure you click OK and OK in order to get that to reset. Now, oils and acrylics don't allow for the glazing option inside of rendering. So if we switch to uh, the express oils or watercolors, you can see that we have normal and glaze as options here. Let's look at this, this gouache filbert. Here we're using normal, and here we're using glaze. Now, if I use normal and glaze next to each other, you'll notice that the glaze is a little bit lighter in opacity, but this is not actually the property of it. Now I'm going to turn the water down so that we're not getting a lot of diffusion here to uh, demonstrate this property. Here, if I go over the top with glaze selected, and I go over the top with normal selected, notice that glaze is doing more of a multiplying overlaying effect 
and the normal rendering is uh, going over just adding to the paint. Now there's the option of paint blending. This is set to default, which would be like a normal mode. The blending modes give you a lot of power to change these into uh, different types of brushes. Notice here with different selected. Or with saturation selected here. You can do a lot of unique, powerful things. Let's set that back to default. And let's look at this option here for default color. Now, this gouache filbert, I'm using the color from the color wheel, which is this blue. Let's say we want this to always start out with a pink. If we select default color. Notice it's still blue because we haven't changed it in the color wheel. We've changed it over here in the default color part of the brush creator. Now what we would want to do, select another brush and then come back to this brush. Notice that it is pink every time that we return to it. Any color you pick from the color wheel, this will override whatever color you have as default color and default color again will be used the first time that you select that brush or every time that you reselect that brush. All right, let's turn this off for now. And in order to see oils and acrylics in pasta, we have to return back to an oils and acrylics brush. Let's clear our layer. Here we can see some nice thick impasto. This slider right here will limit the amount of impasto possible. Impasto smudge. If we turn this down, uh, what you're going to see is a little bit more grainy patchiness inside of the brush. As we increase, this will start to smooth out. More of a creamy brush. Let's see if we can find something to demonstrate this a little bit better. Let's switch to the knife smooth with this set at zero for max impasto smudge at 100 and at 200. And here, as we look in closer, you can see uh, all of this fine texture here that's showing up in the brush is being smoothed and blended and made a little bit more creamy and and smudged. Let's bring that to 100. And let's look at canvas texture influence. Now, as I lightly paint on the canvas with very low pressure, you can see and it might be better to put this to paint mode one. You can see I'm I'm brushing on the bumps of the paper. You can see this ridge here. These are pulling up the paint. Uh, sooner than the depths. And as I push harder, you can see I'm filling in the low points. Now let's look at this slider here. This texture strength curve editor, the influence means how much it will affect the paint and the pressure. This is how much pressure low versus high. So if we put this all the way down, then the canvas won't have any effect. The canvas texture won't have any effect on the paint. If we bring this all the way up, then the canvas texture will have a very high influence on the paint, no matter how hard we push. Notice this is smudging this property from smudge on paper bumps from our stroke is affecting how this looks. Typically what we see in regular painting is a high influence with low pressure. And then with heavy pressure, we push in. This works when you're painting on top of other paint as well. Notice that these higher impasto sections are catching the paint. Now you can switch how this works. So here, paper texture scratch, you can put this on light textures, which are going to be the bumps 
or you can put it on dark textures, which are going to be the valleys. This will fill in differently and auto will decide which of those is best based off of a couple different factors. For paper texture contrast, we're going to switch back to our watercolor, our gouache filbert. Here with this set to one, we're going to paint over this section here. Notice we can see where the brush is hitting the ridged parts of the paper, that texture. As we bring this up, the difference between those two sections where it's hitting the ridged areas of the paper, the texture, is going to be more contrasted. So here's a more pronounced texture difference. Here a little softer, here a little softer. Now for this next section, the cursor section, we're going to go to preferences and we're going to turn off we're going to turn off change cursor size according to pen pressure so we can focus in on what's actually happening here so here we have the gouache flat uh, if we have this set to circle regardless of the actual shape of the brush this shape right here what we're going to see is a circle or a rectangle we can choose the shape this is the actual shape here. Let's choose a different shape and bring the brightness down a little bit for this next section. Now we can see that shape. The shape has some opacity in it, lower and higher levels of opacity. Here, if I bring this threshold to the right, it's going to filter out the lower opacity areas. And here, if I bring this to the left to threshold one, this is going to include the low opacity areas in the shape of the cursor. All right, if you have questions on the paint section of the brush creator, please put that in the comment section. In the next video, we're going to be going over the texture section. We'll be going through textures one and two and the dual brush. Thank you guys for watching. Until next time, stay creative and happy painting.